Hi traders, I'm watching TLRD. Now TLRD is down 25%. I don't usually short them in the first few minutes, but I would TLRD because it's down 25%, 26 right now. So the loss is 1480 and I would really like to short it under the loss. Usually I don't do that in the first one minute candle. I'll try and wait for the second minute candle and uh, hopefully it will only then come down under the lows. And here we go, it's getting, we're getting close. 1480 is the lows, I'm getting ready for, to short 4,000 shares. Watch the sellers, big sellers should come down. Watch the sellers now. Click that button, I'm short. Watch the seller side, watch the seller side. It should come down. Look at how many sellers there are. Look at the number of sellers here. It's 1476 right now. It should continue. I was expecting it to come down faster. I was expecting it to come down faster. I'm a little bit concerned, of, although there's a huge number of sellers compared to the number of buyers. Now, you should also be watching the buyer side. There's not much to see. And I think we're still, we should still come down. But watch the time and sell, because when you watch the time and sell, you can see if there are hidden buyers there. I don't see them right now. Look at the sellers. There's still a lot of sellers. It looks good. It should continue. And we're coming down. Great. It looks good. At any moment now, when it breaks down under 1470, I will be looking for a partial somewhere at the low 60s. Trying to get 20 cents out of this. My stop should be over 1490. So I'm not giving it much. It's the first few minutes. Uh, the way it comes down, it could easily pop up. It's the first third minute now. And we're going it down. Great. So. If it's going to move over 1490, I will move out, but I don't see now a reason why it should move higher. And again, watch the sellers at all times. Watch the sellers. Good. We're moving down 63. It's getting close to my target. Oh, it's moving up a little bit. Let's hope it's going to stay down. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, crazy. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. I didn't even have the chance to move out. 1520. Never move out on a spike. Just never move out on a spike. I just hope now it's going to come back down again. But that could have been a terrible loss here. I was expecting to close it over 1490. And now, if it's going to pop back up over 15 now, I'll close it. I won't let it move again over 15. That's one of the reasons you never ever want to have a hard stop in the system. Spikes like that. Spikes like that would kill you. 1520. I was expecting to close it over 1490. That's 30 cents over my stop loss. But it looks like it may be coming down now. Again, never use a hard stop. Hard stop will take you out on spikes. And I just hope it's going to come down again now. The lows is 1462. I need to see it under the lows and more. I have no idea if it will now, because the initial move was down, but the second move was up, but it does come down. Good. Again, look at the sellers. We're under the lows. Great. We're under the lows. We're getting ready for a partial. Good. At the 50s. Getting ready for a partial. Trying to get a little bit more. Trying to get a little bit more. It's popping up again. The new low is 56. I would like to see it under 56, and then I click the button. It would be for a little bit more than 20 cents. Come on, come on, come down. 56. If it doesn't come, I'll have to take my parcel somewhere around here. 62, 64. Come on, come down, come down. Under 56. One more push down. Here we go. 56, under 56. Any pullback now. Click that button. Well, I was saved. There's nothing else I can say about that. Was that luck? I don't know. Was that a good, solid way of trading? Probably both. I don't use hard stops, and that's why I was saved. The stock is down 25%, now 27 almost 28%. It should come down. Spikes may take you out of the game. When the stock is moving down that much, it could easily pop up again. And that's what happened there. And I'm really glad that um, I kept holding to it and uh, 
it did come to a new low and look at it now reaching new low again okay I start my day with one green trade looking good so far CRM just moved to a new high the highs is 140.92 I will take it over 141.80 sorry high is 141.96 now just moved over 80 I was assuming it's going to move over the highs too and it did you always want to go long or short at the point where you anticipate a new high or a new low there we go nice breakout look at the daily daily looks good too I'm long 2000 shares I'm looking for 50 cents that's ex approximately what I was risking one to one risk reward I always trade with a one to one risk reward especially during those first few minutes of the trading day these are one minute candles so if you count the candles you can see we are in the first 10 minutes nice initial move up broke over the highs very happy to see it moving over 142 I was a little bit concerned of the 142 whole number stocks don't always move easily over whole number this time it did we have a new high now at 142.30 but I wanted to see the stock moving over 142.40 for a partial that was very very close but we didn't get there and here we go new high now I need to see the buyers moving over 40 watch the buyers right now at 142.27 I don't watch the chart traders I don't watch the chart I only watch the buyers and the seller side on the level 2 here we go over 40 click that button great second trade second green trade in CRM just left 200 shares and I hope for some more continuation it was a nice second trade for me C1 C1 is down 1.8 percent but I do like the momentum look at the first momentum the way it came down again these are one minute candles we are still uh, just over 10 minutes just finished uh, with CRM and I'm looking to short C1 just if it comes down under this reversal point over here another two or three cents we're getting ready to short 4,000 shares it's not a big mover stop maybe 15 cents it's getting close watch the buyers at 69 now watch the sellers I don't see a lot of buyers activity actually there's a lot of buyers activity but it moved down now just moved under 68 nice reversal look at the red candle here and again watch the buyers watch the sellers watch the candles but after you watch the buyers and the sellers on the level two that's much more important okay that's a nice initial move again not a big mover I don't expect more than 15 cents or so so I'm looking for the lower lower 50s now the lows is 11.54 so I would like to see it at the low or a little bit below that I don't expect it to come down under 11.50 so easily you see the same the same thing as whole number we have the semi whole numbers like 11.50 you would expect to see a lot of buyers lining up at the 11.50 mark so you should be looking for your partial as close as possible to the 11.50 if it breaks down under then of course that's great but if it touches the 11.50 and bounces or getting real close and you see a lot of sellers a lot of buyers then you should be taking your partial and it is getting close so again watch the buyers watch the sellers see the sellers now at 59 buyers at 58 watch the balance there's not much to see right now there's not much to see you don't always get an idea of exactly what's going on and we're down we just touched my target which was 52 good again 54 55 getting ready for a partial another two three cents I'll take my partial now 53 good 52 great that's my target clicking that button I got it right at my target third green trade and um, as you can see the lows is 1151 and we bounced and again that's 
a semi whole number issue they always bounce look at the buyers now lining up at 50 you see they are at 51 they are at 50 they are lining up at semi whole numbers i still of course i still hope it's going to come down and continue but uh, it's a good idea to take your partial right there and again i have a one to one risk reward ratio so that was my target and it just broke actually didn't hold much at the 50 but you should you should be looking at that and that is something that uh, in many many times uh, holds the stock from continuing nice breakdown under the 50 and it continues i'm getting ready to cover some more i have 300 shares left nice breakdown getting ready to cover another 200 covering now that was my third good trade c1 QD is very interesting. The stock is up 22%. Now, it's a $6 stock, and I don't usually trade stocks under $10. The reason I don't trade stocks under $10 is because most institutional traders are not allowed to trade stocks under $10. But you need to take a look at the daily of QD, because if you take a look at the daily of, you, of QD, you can see this stock started at $30, came down, and now trying to make its way up. So it's not a penny stock that started at zero and moved up to $6, and you know, I don't trade penny stocks because there's a lot of pumping and dumping in penny stocks and most people would lose their money by trading penny stocks. There's a lot of things I can say about penny stocks, but I would certainly will not recommend you trade penny stocks. QD is not a penny stock. You just need to take a look at the daily to realize that. So QD is a decent stock that started at 30 something dollars, came down and now trying to make its way up. There's obviously some news. The stock is up 22%. So nice technical formation. It's trending higher. But there's something I want to mention here about QD. Look at this 6.10 point. The stock moved up all the way to 6.80. That's a hell of a breakout. It's a 70 cent breakout. Nice technical formation with the stock which started with the gap up, came down, tried to move back up. Nice technical formation at the 610 and then a 70 cent move. Now, what's the issue with a $6 stock making a 70 cent breakout? Well, you need to realize this. And I'm going to say this especially for those traders who are just starting because they don't really understand what trading is about and they think that when you have a six dollar stock you could buy maybe i don't know if they would trade a 60 dollar stock with 400 shares then they think that they could possibly buy 4000 shares because it's a six dollar stock and they would trade a 60 dollar stock with 400 shares then why not use all their buying power on a six dollar stock sure if it would move up 70 cents they would be rich but they forget the most important thing about stocks stocks don't move in percents they move in cents meaning what if a stock is going to break out a six dollar stock if it's going to break out it could do easily 70 cents just like qd did here and if they come down they could easily come down 70 cents when a trader buy a stock they would consider going long over 610 by cents. For example, it just broke over. I'm supposed to be buying at 611 or 612. I will think, well, it just moved up maybe two cents. Maybe I should just wait for a confirmation that it maybe it will move another two cents and then I'll buy it. Then it moves up to 614 and I'm clicking the button and maybe I only got it at 606. So that was like six cents over. Of course, you shouldn't do something like that, but most traders, most novice traders would wait a little bit. They wait for some kind of confirmation. This is wrong. You shouldn't be waiting for that. But I'm, just using the, I'm just using this as an example. So you were thinking about going long at 611. Uh, you actually got it at 606. They don't care that six cents in a six dollar stock is one percent. On the other hand, they may look at a sixty dollar stock at a breakout with a $60 stock and it would look the same. Will they buy at 6001 or 60 or 6002 or maybe 3 or maybe 4 or maybe 5 or maybe 6? So they wait a little bit, they wait for confirmation, then they click the button and maybe they get go long at 6006. So a 6 cent in a $60 stock is 0.1%. A 6 cents in a $6 stock is 1%. Now, the thing is 
stocks are not being traded by percent, they are being traded by cents. People are considering going long by one cent, two cents, three cents. They don't care it's a six dollar stock. So a, sto a six dollar stock could easily do 70 cents just like a 60 dollar stock at a nice breakout could do the same. 60, 70 dollars breakout. It could easily come down 60, 70 cents just like a six dollar stock can come down 70 cents. So if you if you Understanding what I'm trying to say here, I'm trying to say that you should be trading fixed quantities because stocks do not behave in percents, they behave in cents. So if you're trading 400 shares in a $60 stock, you should be trading 400 shares in a $6 stock. And I don't care if you have so much money in your account that you can, you can actually trade 4,000 shares, that doesn't matter at all. You should stick to regular number of shares, the same number of shares, the same quantities. It doesn't matter if you trade a $2 stock, a $6 stock, or a $60 stock, because stocks behave in cents, not in percents. I hope that was clear enough. Now I'm back to QD. QD looks great. Uh, there's a nice reversal here over 650 and I want to go long 1000 shares. Now I know it's a ridiculous, the ridiculous number of shares for a $6 stock. Here we go. I'm long. 1,000 shares just moved over 650. It again, nice trend. Stock is up almost 24%. Should continue higher. The market so far is moving higher. So I'm long QD with just 1,000 shares. There are several reasons for that. One is I already have three winning trades. Whenever I have uh, a good start like that, I never risk too much. I always, uh, I always lower my quantity just because I want to stay green. Usually, when people are having a great day, and um, especially if they're new to trading, they would raise their quantities because they trust us themselves too much. They think that they are invincible. They have the feeling that they are invincible, and then they would trade more, and usually a green trade would turn to be a red trade. So if that trade will go the wrong way, and it could easily do so. And a $6 stock, as I mentioned earlier, could easily come down 15, 20, 30 cents. So in that case, I'm going to have a loser. But it's not going to be a big loser money-wise because I already have three trades and I trade small quantities. So 1,000 shares could easily cost me here 200 or $300. But I expect it to continue higher. And uh, QD does look very, very nice for continuation. That's my fourth trade today. Well, it certainly is not behaving the way I expected it. It's coming down. It left a small bottoming tail at 622. If it's going to come down to 621, I'm going to be out. And that is a 30 cent loser. It's coming down now. I'm out. I'm out. I just moved out. I just had a 30 cent loser with 1,000 shares in a $6 stock. That's a 5% down in no time. That took it maybe 15 minutes to come down by 5%. That's a $6 stock. That's the reason why you should always trade with fixed quantities, no matter what the price of the stock is. So you see, I could have had a 20 cent winner or a 30 cent winner as easily as I just had a 30 cent loser. That's my fourth trade today. I have a loser and I think it's time to, <laughs> it's time to quit as long as I'm up. And again, lower quantities because I never ever want to have a big loser after having such a great start for the day. I'm having a nice day today. CRM, nice trade, C1, green, QD, a loser and a nice winner in TLRD. Three winners, one loser, up $1980. And that's my weekly average too because it's Thursday today, four trading days, and I have three winners, one losing day. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for watching our video. Before you go, we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial. TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004, and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.